There's been lots of questions as to whether a student can buy a house in the UK. And the question is, can a student buy a house in the UK? The answer is yes. But the second question is, can an international student buy a house in the UK? That's the question we're going to answer in this video. So please stick around to the end of this video so you get the answer to that question and get all the information that comes with it. My name is Tochi. You're welcome to my channel. Please consider subscribing, like this video as well, and you won't regret it. And to all my returning subscribers, you guys are welcome back. So let's just go straight into the video. My husband is here and he will introduce himself and then we'll continue. Hi, my name is Dozi and thanks for watching today. So for those who just joined my channel, we announced that we bought a house in the UK within two years of our arrival in the UK. And it's not just us, we have a lot of friends that have gotten and moved into their own houses as well. And they don't have their indefinite leave to remain yet, they're not citizens yet. They just came into the UK um, at about the same time we came. So it's not like it's a big deal, so long as you are on a work visa, because we are on a work visa, so long as you're on a work visa, you can buy a house in the UK. And so that's that for that. But for students, because we've got lots of questions about that, for international students, we just want to discuss some things with you and tell you the options you have and, you know, show you whether you can buy a house on a student visa or not. So that's basically why we're here. Yeah, so really I think when people ask this question, can a student buy a house? A student can buy a house if a student has the money to buy a house. Yeah. It's as simple as that. You don't even have to actually be a UK resident to buy a house in the UK actually. You can actually be a foreigner and you have money and you can come to the UK and buy a house. Yeah, There's you no, have your cash. Yeah, alright. So, uh, being a student does not limit you in a way, if that makes sense. I think the question people are trying to ask is can an international student get a mortgage because um i would assume that if you had the cash to pay up front you you wouldn't be asking you just walk into whoever sells the house and just pay cash so can an international student get a mortgage i think that's a question that um we are seeking to answer actually in, in reality it's not just about buying a house buying a house is just paying for the house but how you finance the house or how you get the money is the issue. If you have cash, you pay up front. But if you don't have cash, then a bank would give you the money. So how do you get the bank to give you that money as an international student is the question people are asking. So to begin with, for you to get a mortgage, all right, you have to show the bank you can afford that mortgage or you can afford your repayment from what you earn. So normally what happens is you have to submit at least three months pay slip. You know, they'll have to look at what you've earned and use that to work out your annual wage income. and income and, you know, what comes to you. Now, um, let me point out that from our experience, the banks would prefer you to present a pay slip from a permanent or a full-time job. If that makes sense if you're on a zero hour contract it's difficult because they can't pinpoint yeah they can have an average of what you earn a month but because you're on a zero hour contract you work when you want to work and you don't have maybe like sick pay or stuff like that it becomes a bit more tricky so like when we got mortgage we had to present you know our full-time pay slips so then as an international student you're not allowed to work full-time you're only allowed to work 20 hours. Only 20 hours a week and maybe when school is not in 10, you can actually work more than 20 hours a week. And by definition in the UK, 20 hours a week is not a full-time job, it's a part-time job. And again, most international students are on a zero-hour contract, which means they are not obligated to work. They only work when they are available, so they get to pick and choose when they work. So again, that, you know, the bank will look at that and wonder, okay, so how do we guarantee that you can afford this mortgage? All right. And again, is you come in as a student on probably one year or one year, six month visa or something like that. You need three months pay slip. So by the time you come as an international student, get your BRP, settle into your studies, maybe two weeks, maybe one month before you find a job, then you need to put the pay slips together. And it's just 20 hours a week. It's not going to amount to a lot in terms of what you can afford because how the bank works out what you can afford is they take your annual wage and multiply by 4.5. Whatever figure they get is what you can afford to borrow as mortgage. So if you're a 
20 hours a week job obviously your salary would be half or close to or just a, a little above half what somebody on a full-time wage would take so your affordability is going to be very low sadly what if your spouse is earning significantly can they put okay. your earnings and yeah. your spouse's earnings together so, to so work yeah, out yeah that's 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 a, an important point um your spouse can be on a full-time contract and mm-hmm. probably earn you know is a good wage yeah so then you can take a joint mortgage but then it's not just about the affordability, right? You've been in UK for less than a year. In this situation now, you can't come into the UK as an undergraduate and come with your spouse. It has to be a postgraduate study, which is most often than not, it's just one year, master's, then PhD is three years. So if you come in as, an, as a postgraduate student for master's, it's one year, and for PhD is three years. So now, for the, somebody on master's degree, which is what majority of people are on, to be honest, you, you barely have you know three months of history financially so you don't even have like a serious credit history so how are they going to give you a mortgage yeah you get so again it's a bit difficult because you need time even though we did that only in less than two years yeah you can argue that but we were on a work visa and we've had like 18 months credit history for the banks to look at and make a decision in fact i would say above 18 months like let's say 20 something months to make a decision but you as a student you have what three four five months all right so that's a bit difficult i remember that some people still have to pay their school fees and you know complete their payment and all that so it's a bit tricky yeah so talking about money and payments let me just quickly talk to you guys about the sponsor of today's video This video is brought to you in partnership with Lemonade Finance, an app that me and many of my friends and family regularly use to send money to Africa. Lemonade Finance allows Africans in Canada and in the UK to send money to 10 African countries. So you can send money to Ghana, Kenya, Nigeria, Senegal, Ivory Coast, Cameroon, Benin, Tanzania, Uganda and Rwanda at zero fees. Yes, guys, you heard me. I said zero fees. There are no transaction fees at all. And the recipient receives the money instantly. And guess what? They have the best rates that you can find in the market. So you'd always get your complete value for money. I've been using Lemonade Finance for a few months now. And I can guarantee you that it's very fast, easy to use, and completely free when it comes to sending money back home. And if you're not in Canada or in the UK, don't worry. I have inside Gs and I can guarantee you that Lemonade Finance will be available in the US and in Europe in the next few months. And when that happens, I'll be the first to let you know. You can download the app with my referral link in the description box to get 10% cash back on your first transaction. You can also type in my code TOCHI if you've downloaded the app directly from the app store. That way you get 10% cash back on your first transactions above £100. So if you send £100, you get £10 back. If you send £200, you get £20 back and so on capped at £50. So what are you waiting for guys? Hurry now, download Lemonade Finance app and begin to send money to Africa for free and don't forget to use my code TOCHI so you get the 10% cash back so guys let's get back to the video so guys as I was saying some people still have to pay their school fees they have to still work to raise you know and to complete their school fees and all that so imagine having to pay back your school fees and still paying your mortgage and all of that so it's a whole lot these are the things that the bank will actually consider you know if you're applying for a mortgage yeah because another thing the bank checks is they want to check how much debt you have before they give you mortgage it's all going to you know be factored into their decision making process so if you still have your tuition yet to be paid up for they will look they'll look at it you know make make and make sure that you can actually afford a mortgage with that debt hanging around all right they don't want you to be overwhelmed all right with having a lot of things to service with your money so they'll look at your liabilities your debts things that your outgoings all right so it's not just because your partner has a, a good job you know as we argued they look at if you've not paid your fees completely i think it's going to count because they want to be sure that you can afford that mortgage so uh with the short time you spent in the uk not having a permanent contract 
even if your spouse has a good job that can make up for the affordability, if you've not paid up your fees, that's going to be another factor. So these things actually make it difficult for an international student to get a mortgage. I won't say it's impossible because, I mean, in this world, sometimes some things may just happen, but the chances of it happening is very, 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 very low. That's the truth. If you're on a PhD, it's possible as well because you have three years to do your PhD. But then you have to convince the bank that you stay back because someone on a work visa is a different thing because he has a job already and he can easily renew that job contract and extend his or her visa and eventually get permanent residence. But as a student, you don't have a job. Once your studies are over, they will think you should be going back to your country. So again, if you've done PhD for two years, then you get a mortgage in the third year. Okay, so what's going to happen after your, your PhD is over in three years? So these are the questions that the bank will also be asking a PhD student. For a master's student, it's very hard because you have just one year to do all the things you need to do to get qualified for a mortgage, which is very difficult. Then they will also have the question of after your master's, what's the next thing for you? You're not on a work visa. So all these things make it difficult. Yeah. So what should an international student do if they want to buy a house? And what if the person has the cash? So if you have the cash, if you have the two, if this is 300k, if you have the cash, 300,000 or 200,000, you just need to walk to wherever you're selling a house and pay. That's all. Just prove your identity. Just show them how you got the money because again, they want to prevent money laundry. Yeah. So if you come with the cash, you have to show how you end it. You have to show whether it's inheritance or you have a business or you, you end it as a salary. You just have to show them that you earn this money genuinely. You can't just present 300,000 pounds in cash yeah. and they won't ask questions, right? So you have to show how you end this money and prove your identity. Once that is done, then you can get a house. But then what I would say is, if you're an international student and you want to get a mortgage, it's good you have that thought because it shows your, you know, thinking ahead of, uh, thinking ahead. So I would say, uh, spend that time while studying to sort of like build your credit score and try and save for your deposit if you can, all right? If you can't, then focus on your studies. But if you can, then save, you know, whatever you can save towards your deposit. Start building your credit score. Then when you probably get a work visa and you're a bit more stable, then go for a mortgage. But while you're a student, I, I think it's going to be very hard and I, I, would, I would really say just focus on your studies. And build your credit score. Yeah. Get a credit card, build your credit score. We have a full video on how to build your credit score in the UK. Yeah. If you want to see that video, we'll leave the link in the description box as well. So yeah. And again, as a student, you can open Lifetime ISA, um, which we've explained before in the past. So Lifetime ISA gives you 25% on whatever you save towards putting down as deposit for your first house in the UK. So you can open your lifetime ISA now, put in your £4,000 and get your £1,000. If you do it for the first year, second year, by the time you get a work visa, you could have gained like yeah. £3,000 as a single person. If you are if you have a spouse, then you'd have gained twice that amount. If so you do it separately. Yeah, if you do it separately. So get your credit score, you know, on the way. Open your lifetime ISA and you know start saving gradually then that would give you a good starting point once you get that work visa and you know you're st settled in the uk then it's easy for you to get a mortgage yeah so yeah that's basically it if you have any question about buying a house or anything around that just leave it in the comment section and we would answer it on about we're making a video um in that regards Okay, so yeah, we've come to the end of this video. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye. Bye.